radiator leak. Luckily, I don't have to go far. Only the finest bubbly water for the ranchero. After all, it's just gonna bubble out anyway. So I brought it up to three bars. That'd probably be enough for this tree. The old ranchero's been working pretty good. For, except for it kind of doesn't want to shift and stuff. Let's not talk about that. Starts right up. Drive is where neutral was. And that sort of thing. Yeah, that's supposed to be reverse. There it is. We bought the new Chevy, the 2021. I had like dreams of having a new truck to drive around in. But the reality is that truck was for the crew and it became obvious real soon. There's neutral where drive should be. It became obvious that the only thing left for me to drive was this. Which is kind of funny. But it is enjoyable also. I mean, you can't go far. Not yet. But it's really nice to work out. Everything is like really low in that bed. You just reach back there and take what you need. It's a smooth ride. Um, it's pretty fun. Here's a little something new we got. We're making all these modular attachments for the monkey beaver harness and this is like the water bottle it's a brand new item high quality h2o you can find it on the website it's pretty cool i mean it's super good construction made right here in merlin oregon grants pass oregon and it just goes on your harness and uh keeps you hydrated I mean, it's, it's a tight enough that you could probably, <laughs> might slosh around. But. Let's try it out. in there with your water bottle yeah and it would be okay it would stay that would be cool so here's a new chevy this is its purpose to carry the tank for fire danger but we got to get this thing started it's not been wanting to start which doesn't make you look cool when the oregon department of forestry shows up yeah so i've got this little valve all the way open that's where it was leaking really bad mm -hmm. it's not now you got it set to run isn't there a choke there is Yep. Take the filter all the way off. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So. Yeah. Right here. Take the choke off. And these things are cool. This is from Top Saw. Been around a while. The guy that came up with this was pretty savvy. 
I mean, it's got everything you need for whatever you use. Husky, steel, um, echo. It's like, it'll do your spark plugs and your, your, it's got all your different sizes. See? I mean, it, I don't think there's anything it doesn't do. All I want to do right now is, this thing doesn't seem to like be using much oil. I have not adjusted it yet, but there's the adjustment for it right there. Right there on top. So, I'll just turn it up to max. <laughs> Why not, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it hasn't been like sounding dry and gritty or anything. It's just, it seems like it, it would use more oil than what it's gone through for how much cutting it's done. Everything you need. So the harnesses are are made to accommodate this type of real firm connection, like a belt loop connection. Or you can do what I'm gonna do here with this one is just hang it. A little bit of a drawstring here. So, stays in there. When, they, when the bottle sticks out the top, a lot of these bottles have kind of a, a narrowing that this accommodates. So you want to use a bottle that kind of accommodates a uh, cinching of this area, even if it sticks above the top. Giving me a warning. Ah. Oh, my back hurts today, YouTube. This right here isn't the worst thing for it, but ah, a lot of something real tight there in the lower back there. One of the great things about this saw is, you know, we have a water truck and fire tools and a special permit that lets us work out here in this weather. But people here at Chainsaws and they call the firemen. And then they come out because they have to, it's their job. And then they check out all your stuff. And that's fine. You got all your stuff, who cares, right? Thing is, it takes time to be searched. And while you're being searched, the clock is ticking because everybody has to stop working by one. But if you're not making any noise, and Joe Neighbor, who's the type of guy who gets pissed off if Somebody's running a saw because all he knows is, hey, I'm not allowed to do that. Well, he hears this thing and he thinks old fogey Wilbur is out there in his garage using a sawzall or something. 
You don't even think about it. So the result is nobody shows up. What? I heard you got it running. Yeah, that's good. Damien got the pump working for the tank if the fire department shows up. ODF, Oregon Department of Forestry. Make sure they're not blocking that guy's driveway. Anyway, we like the ODF. We do. I mean, they're like us. They're guys that are working in the woods. And they like us too. Because when they come to see us, they actually do have our qualifications met. Although we are human, so today we were trying to get the pump working. But we didn't stop until it was working. And now it's working. So another fire season. to move climb line and foot line up together all over the rough bark and little snags but you get up there a ways you kind of like the idea of a double tie-in especially when you're cutting you know you don't want to pin all your hopes on one thing all your eggs in one basket Hit a bump. Whole basket of eggs comes out. Hmm, that reminds me of a joke. Little Johnny went to school. Probably told this joke before. It's okay, it's a sign of aging to tell it again. Like a rite of passage. To repeat yourself. So, little Johnny went to school and the teacher said, <laughs> teacher said, go home, find a family member to tell you a story with a moral to it and then come back Tell us a story in the moral. Okay, first day, Sally said, I got a story, my dad's a chicken farmer. And uh, and uh, he makes his money selling eggs. Taking the eggs to market. Put them in this giant bin. I thought it was a little risky, but he did it anyway. Hit a bump on the way to town. Tipped over the bin. Lost his money, lost all his eggs on account of. You ain't supposed to put all your eggs in one basket. Okay, next day, it's another girl's turn. Johnny wasn't up yet. Splinter in my finger there. And uh, she said, my dad's chicken farmer too. And uh, he makes his money selling the baby chicks after they hatch, you don't sell the eggs.
And one day, he got his eggs. They were just coming. I mean, he had a lot of eggs. He got so excited about how many chickens he'd be able to sell. But he counted the eggs. And then he got a loan based on how many eggs he had, how much money he was going to get, and he'd be able to pay off that loan. Went on a vacation. Had a good old time. Something was wrong. A rooster wasn't around his job or something. And the eggs hatched. Only, only a few of them hatched. They weren't near as enough to cover the loan. So the moral was, the moral was don't count your chickens before they hatch. Oh, the teacher loved it. Little June bug, or whatever your name is. That is a good moral. Life experience. Great job. Johnny, tell us your story tomorrow. Okay. Johnny goes home. Gets his Uncle Ted to tell him a story on account of Johnny got a broken family. Uncle Ted's the one he looks up to. And uh, he comes back to school after hearing Uncle Ted's story. And he says, my Uncle Ted, go ahead and clear that rope. My Uncle Ted was shot down over Vietnam. He was over enemy territory and he was shot down. He was parachuting down into the bad enemy. And uh, all he had was a hundred bullets and a machete and a bottle of whiskey. So he said, well, this is gonna be rough. I'll just drink the bottle of whiskey now. So he drank the bottle of whiskey on the way down. And uh, when he came in among them soldiers, he killed 70 enemy soldiers out of his 100 bullets, which ain't too bad. There was a hundred enemies down there and uh, he killed another. <laughs> 25 of them with his machete. But his machete busted. And so he slammed one more in the temple with the side of that handle. Broke it off in his skull. Killed him. And he had to kill the last four of them with his bare hands. Oh, the teacher was like, Johnny, what is the moral of this story if there is one? Johnny said, oh, teacher, the moral is don't mess with my Uncle Ted when he's been drinking. Ted, he was quite a role model. Hey, this might be a good time to talk to you guys about hazard trees. I was watching the Reg Coats video. He was talking about pricing on hazard trees. He makes some good points. He says some people just raise the price. Ouch, dang it. There's a reason to raise the price. It doesn't gas very well. Uh, I said some people raise the price just because hazard tree price goes up. Reg wasn't quite sure about that. He wasn't seeming to draw a line in the sand in either either direction but he wondered what y'all thought I, I got some thoughts on it he says to 
job is either a job you can do or a job you can't do and then you charge for it. And I mostly agree with that. Like this tree. Stone dead, kind of wobbly. Would freak a new guy out big time probably. There'd be things to this tree you wouldn't do. You wouldn't crank on it. Side pressure. Or something. Clearly crumbly. So this tree, just another tree to us really. We're not going, that's a hazard tree, you're gonna pay. it's going to imposition us so having said that hmm, there's a tree down there in my way So this top, I don't think it'll push too hard on this butt for the constitution of the top, really. Weren't that pretty. So, uh, what was I saying about oh. hazardous something? Uh, oh, there are some. I've even seen Reg do them. Now, Reg, he just charged on the I can or I can't. I'm sure he did. But there are some, especially the ones here, let me talk to you. Especially the ones where nobody else wants to do it and they got experts referring. Uh, you and 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 it's just come down to you and solving this puzzle and um, Yeah, you charge more But you're, you're not really charging because I might die. I mean come on You're not gonna Take the job if you think there's a high probability of you dying What you're charging for is how much it's gonna imposition you and how much you're gonna have to think outside the box to solve this thing that nobody else wants to deal with. You know, the guys who deal with uh, the sewer, they probably charge a lot. I know the plumber does because, come on, who, nobody else wants to do that, right? So there's that. The chipper is kind of noisy. I need a, I need a battery powered Husqvarna chipper, I think. We'll call it the 640i. Okay, so all that said, I still believe in freedom. Not a micromanaged workforce. <clears throat> that means you charge what you want and they're free to say no and move on to something else. Now, if it's a gouging thing and they're not free to say no, then, you know, morality plays a part and uh, maybe there should be some penalty for some dirt bag of which I can think of one but freedom says you give them a price they don't like it they don't they don't hire you you know it's a, it's a beautiful thing really so what's an imposition to one person might not be an imposition to another you know another person might think oh heck no if I do that I'm getting paid right 
and then if you knock it out good for you nobody else wanted to touch it you get a bigger paycheck there's nothing wrong with that but humans you know they can be pretty shadowy dark creatures inside and you might want to keep an eye on yourself because if you got in a habit of that then you'd be, you'd be all about the money and you'd, you'd harm some little old lady who didn't have much just because you could so freedom means the freedom to do right and the freedom to do wrong within boundaries and there's you know people who go around protecting people and they're put there for a reason so i i kind of am just saying make your call make your call based on what you want to make and uh there ain't no shame in that you charge what you like this tree this is a normal tree this uh, this ain't we're not we're treating it like it's green it doesn't feel dangerous and even if it was we'd find a way that we did not endanger ourselves and uh, some of those trees we might even salivate over those hardcore trees just because <laughs> the excitement the challenge would be a better word you know the mental figure it out come up with the right solution make a hard thing look easy type of deal so there's my answer to uh, what Reg's question was and it's, it's basically summarized in the word freedom and maybe subtitle morality oh another thing I was thinking of if you make a thing look easy that's just terrifying to somebody else maybe the person who owns it maybe other people who looked at it it's not that terrifying to you there is there should be a price tag you can put on you know I've had pain and suffering and ambulance rides and blood and again pain 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 my lessons haven't all been like just you know go to a classroom and study a book and learn exactly what to do when it ain't like that you gotta you know i'm up here by myself right so you charge you charge for that pain um again with morality and freedom as your guidelines because you know uh, my accountant he took a different road <laughs> but man sometimes I think I would pay you more buddy don't watch this video I would pay you more because he's a Jedi of the pencil pushing you know he he suffered probably some to, to become that guy around tax time you know suffering right long hours they deserve their pay the guy who's hired to do a job man he deserves to get paid especially when he makes it look easy I had an accountant one time he saved me like $49,000 by a crooked IRS agent. Um, nothing against the IRS, if you're watching. Good job, guys. Uh, but he saved me a lot of money by being uh, my uh, power of attorney or whatever and talking to them in ways that they would have just ran me right over. Anyway, he saves me multiple tens of thousands of dollars and then he charged me a hundred dollars Dennis Doyle I love you buddy thank you BAM I had a lot of fun talking to you today YouTube I feel like you're with me here those cool people who have been commenting for years one of them one of them recently uh, the backwards engineer long time cool guy tree man says he got struck by a limb on his head and got a couple of brain bleeds messed up his teeth uh, messed up his orbital bones 
messed him up. And then he says, and I was driving in my car at 35 miles per hour when a limb broke out of a tree, torpedoed my car and nailed me. I was like, wow. Backwoods engineer. Heal up, buddy. Uh, thanks for all the years. Take one more piece and then I'll go home. These guys can pull the tree over. Oh yeah, I gotta try out my gotta try out my new quali high quality H2O. Only the best for the Ranchero and August Tanaki when, when he talks about himself in the third person. Oh yes, sponsored by Bubbly Sparkling Water. Hi. I should mention also that uh, yeah, people people bleed and and toil and work and you know they pay to to learn. You gotta pay them for for that. But uh, I got a poem called "Made for This." Look it up on YouTube. Made for this. And in there, you'll hear me say, "I can't believe they pay me." So. A vocation means that you're kind of called to it. It's your calling, and and that helps helps you get better at something if if you really like it. Doesn't mean it ain't work though. Huh, Damien? Feels a little tiny, tiny bit like work. Oh yeah. Sometimes. Is it all the dirt on you and the sawdust and the itchy and the poison oak and the in the early morning when you don't want to go to school? the bugs. I felt that a little bit this morning. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> Not for any certain reason. Um, but it wasn't really about not wanting to go do the work. It was just, dang, bed feels so comfortable right now. <laughs> and time went by so fast when I fell asleep. I was yeah. in the morning already. I stayed up really late. Really? Super late. I had to sleep by probably Oh man. 10 30. Yeah, you're probably in good shape. I think shape. that's that's probably why I wanted to sleep longer is because I overslept. You probably dumped this right toward that fir tree. Yeah. It's up so to you. What did the top look like when you got up there? Was it Dude it was so bad. We got a double charge. We got a like triple charger. Okay. So instead of like instead of two thousand, it's gonna be eight thousand. Okay, yeah. Well, I don't know if the math is right, but close enough. I think she'll understand. Yeah. It was so sketchy up she there. She knows what it's like Dude, up I there. I barely got out of there with my life. Yeah. Is yeah. It, that's... And you don't have quite enough left, life left to fall it now? Dude, I need a parade. I need people around clapping. Everybody shouting. get over here. Yeah. Bring the float. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be repeating myself here, but I really do like this style of video for YouTube. I feel like, well, I've always kind of tried to abbreviate things because I felt like I didn't want to waste people's time. You know, it's an impatient world. Got to constantly change the camera angles and keep it interesting. But I just don't care as much now. I feel like I'm talking to the core people, the people that have been watching for a long time that that are like, you know, real, real people that's like, I feel like I'm, I'm with you at, at the moment. So, 
probably do this again sometime, huh? Buck beaver harness is so easy to take on and off. I mean, and that's and that's without adjusting the bridge out. I, mean, I have an adjustable bridge. See, if I wanted to, I could adjust it way out. Then it'd be really easy to step in and out of. But even without adjusting it out having it tight and close just like they are I mean you could put a harness like this when we made this harness in the northwest we used to get a lot of rain before it turned into a dang dry desert but uh, you all had to put on your harness over rain gear and it was difficult it would get all bunchy when you're trying to you know put a when you're trying to get a big dude into a small suit or something it don't work good so it was like that trying to get rain gear trying to get your harness on over your rain gear and that's why it's made to the legs to clip on and the, and the belt to clip on and so you can just get all your little folds of your rain gear and everything just perfect and then put it on and all of this massive back support and leg support and stuff and easy to put on and not have some fold of rain gear that's just hammering into your body all day that was the concept and it's still working good so if you haven't experienced the cadillac and you can afford it do it right yeah i love mine and if i didn't love it i'd come knock on your door late at night and tell you how I really don't like it. Oh yeah? Just to set off the vibe of how bad it really is. <laughs> if it was that bad. But I like it. Yeah, it's it's super comfy, especially once you like use it for a certain amount of time and you did get you, it all Did you see this yet? You get all dialed to you. That's cool. I call the H2O. How do you do that voice? C3PO? No, high quality H2O guy. I don't know. Adam Sandler, water boy. Oh, I haven't seen that in a long time. He's all, he's all, it's cold. <laughs> yeah, I sound like true. Yoda, but. Yeah. I don't remember his exactly. talk's kind of tight lipped. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. It's the classic, like, Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. It's what? Um, it's cold. That's yeah. high quality H2O. Adam Sandler's good too. I like Gatorade. him. Gatorade. And then fit like 50 first dates, but he's not as funny in that one. Well, he's, he's funny, but that movie is difficult for me to watch. He doesn't do the whole only uh, because it's sad that there's people that are, yeah, and that would be a rough one dang. day, one day memory, basically. Dude, that's kind of handy for a lady, though. I mean, no, no, uh, no, no ill will meant against ladies but a lady that didn't have a memory like an elephant and would bring up the past <laughs> <laughs> not that you do a lot of bad stuff but at the same time <laughs> not that there's a lot of bad stuff you wouldn't get punished for the rest of your life for that one time you uh, uh and then there's the sort of creative memory of how it went yeah 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 <laughs> so we have an hour and 15 minutes till one and there's four more dead ones in here that I need to go talk to her about. I'd save them. I don't think we can do a yeah, hour. Yeah, I'd save them. Minutes. So I think I'm gonna go talk to her about them and try to set them up for like a Monday because Jeff knows yeah. about them. Okay. Yeah, perfect. And then I don't have to come explain it that day. Yeah. Because Jeff will know that it's a chipper right. and skid steer thing. Make sure she knows they're really dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super bad. As a matter of fact, she should probably rent a motel until we get back here. Yeah, we probably should have done these first. Yeah. Rather than those. We didn't see them because uh, the danger made us. Our look eyes away. were blinded by tears. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, by tears. <laughs> <laughs> hey YouTube, there's one more thing, bonus content thing I should mention. Probably the most important thing of all, and that is that today is my mom's birthday. And my mom, she's the secretary for my company. She, she's the one who answers the phone. She's the most pleasant and patient and classy 
woman. I mean, she is, she is the epitome of maturity and grace. And she's 80 years old. And this epic example, this gentle soul through my whole life, through my whole childhood, such a beautiful, beautiful person. She says that she's my biggest fan. <laughs> that is, there's something, huh? There's something to talk about. So, say happy birthday to Helen Hunnicky. She had five kids out in the backwoods of Alaska, way out in the bush where we grew up off the grid. She had two in LA where she was actually a model um, in LA before my Vietnam veteran dad scooped her up and took her out into the boonies. She had seven kids. She worked without power. Without running water. Ah, uh, what a beautiful person. I love you, Mom. Yep. Yep, I love my mom. Love my dad, too. Good job, Dad. You know how they say behind every good man there's a good woman? I don't know uh, if it's true, but it's true uh, this time. <laughs> because she followed him out there and stayed with him. And uh, he wouldn't have stayed there without her, I can tell you that. And he made a life for us out there. They did. I mean, I grew up spending every day outside all day climbing trees and, and catching trout in the stream. You know, you didn't go fishing, you went catching. In Oregon, you go fishing. Up there in my childhood, you went catching. I used to think, you know, we're poor and other people got it better than us. And, but when I grew up and left home and finally got myself a light switch and a flushing toilet, um, I realized that living like that had made me strong and it had made me stand out among my peers on the work in the workforce because well, well, they were fading on the commercial fishing boats up there where I went to work. A lot of people would fade out, be beaten down and consumed by it. And I rose up and stood out because I had been tempered with kind of a busy hard life, hauling water and chopping wood and cutting wood by hand with a sweet saw instead of a chainsaw. And anyway, my parents are awesome. They gave me such value. I mean, they equipped me. And now I'm I'm taking care of them, which is how it should be. And they're taking care of me. He's fixing my stuff when it breaks and my mom is answering the phone. Ah, oh, I got a good life. I got a really good life. 